Ultrasound scanning of deep infrapatellar bursitis. Welcome to this quick ultrasound guide on scanning for deep infrapatellar bursitis, a commonly overlooked cause of anterior knee pain, especially in active individuals or those with repetitive stress on the extensor mechanism. Let's begin with the anatomy. The deep infrapatellar bursa is a small synovial line sac located between the posterior surface of the distal patellar tendon and the anterior tibial cortex, just above the tibial tuberosity. Its primary role is to reduce friction during knee movement. In normal conditions, this bursa is not visible on ultrasound. However, in cases of bursitis, often due to microtrauma, repetitive kneeling, or post-traumatic inflammation, the bursa may become distended with fluid and symptomatic. Now, let's walk through the scanning technique. Start by positioning the patient supine, with the knee slightly flexed over a pillow to relax the tendon and improve visualization. Use a high-frequency linear probe, ideally 10 to 15 megahertz. Apply gel generously to ensure full contact and good image quality. Begin with a longitudinal scan along the patellar tendon. Identify the distal patellar tendon, tibial tuberosity, and look just deep to the tendon. A hypoechoic or anechoic collection may indicate fluid within the deep bursa. Now scan in the transverse plane, just below the patella. In early or mild cases, fluid tends to accumulate in the lateral and medial dependent recesses, giving the bursa an hourglass appearance. These can easily be missed on midline sagittal scans. If present, infrapatellar bursitis will appear as a well-defined fluid-filled pocket beneath the tendon. In chronic cases, you may also see septations or synovial thickening. Always compare with the contralateral side, especially when fluid is minimal or asymmetric. In summary, accurate identification of deep infrapatellar bursitis requires patient positioning with slight flexion, high-resolution scanning in both longitudinal and transverse planes, careful inspection of lateral and medial recesses, and clinical correlation to confirm symptoms. Ultrasound not only helps in diagnosis, but also guides aspiration or steroid injection when needed. Thanks for watching this focused ultrasound tip. Subscribe for more musculoskeletal scanning guides and interventional techniques.